We could steal the helicopter from there. Do you want to steal the helicopter? What could possibly go wrong? Well, well, well. Oh, you're Here I am in my rubber suit. I've, oh, I've lost my disguise. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. I've lost my disguise. Oh, for God's sake. Get out if you can. Oh, yeah. I've been shot down, you silly buffoon. I'm in a rubber ring. <laughs> Look at that weak paddling. What is that? To touch me. Oh, for God's sake, I've been touched by a man in rubber. Oh, God. Right. Is that you shooting? What are you yeah, doing? I've had enough of them. I'm shooting the henches. What? Oh, I'm down, I'm down. You have to touch me again. For God's sake. Come and touch me. I'm in third. a rubber ring. <laughs> this is the third time I've had to touch you in two minutes. <laughs> now come and stand by me and I'll cover you in my slurp. Right? Uh, okay, ready? Again. Right, so ready? used to this. Hey! Get you quick, Claw McGraw. <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's swinging about, hang on. How can, no, it's only swinging around because you're moving it. Get, get in the helicopter. I can't get in the helicopter, you're on a roof. <laughs> and hang I on. can't get up on the roof. Hang on. Oh, does oh. it leave me? <laughs> <laughs> leave me, why don't you? <laughs> right, can you get oh, off? Oh, God, there's another helicopter. Get closer. <laughs> That's it, that's it, hold on. Hold on. Are you on? Right, go. No! Oh. Okay, down the stairs, I'm looking downstairs. Oh, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. No. Ah! Help! Help! <laughs> I'm going to die in a minute. I've been shot. I, I know you have. I've been Hello and welcome back again to Round the Archives in Conversation. Hello. Hello Lisa. Hello. Hello Martin. Hello. And hello Paul. Hello. Well, glad to have you all back. <laughs> now today I'd like the discussion to get all animated, as it were. <laughs> now at the start of this uh, episode, and Martin and Paul haven't heard it yet, but I've put on uh, a little clip or so or a, a compilation of Warren and my me playing Fortnite yesterday, which I came to realise was essentially us making an ad-lib cartoon in a computer game as we run around and all sorts of things go dreadfully bad for us when I can't fly helicopters and things like that. And it ends in the way that Treasure Hunt never did. Uh, but... Somebody won, you mean? Uh, well, we didn't, certainly. We, we, I, I sort of ended up in a tree. But you'll you're, you're hear the clip. Um, it's kind of weird. This is like you, You've got a mystery clip, so me and Paul are... It's, it's a bit like Mr and Mrs yeah. or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, all the audience at home know the answer, yeah. but we don't have a clue. But it's just interesting that the technology of computers now allows you to run around in your, your own 3D cartoon world, basically. So... Uh, 45 years ago uh, I've just been uh, seen the uh, Radio Times listing for that de for that day so that's 21st of April 1975 and it struck me just how many things were on BBC One that were cartoons so you had Mary Mungo and Midge you had Clangers although they wrongly list it as the Clangers uh, you had Hong Kong Fooey and you had Magic Roundabout. Now, I suspect, Martin, this is very much your 
your era, is it, or, or are you even earlier well, than this? No, I'd, I'd, I'd have been, well, if 45 years ago, I'd have been um, 10. So it's probably absolutely my era. Yeah. I probably sat and watched all of those. Yes. You know, uh, yeah. Um, certainly, I mean, uh, I mean, clangers. Yeah, did you say clangers? Clangers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what what was the one before the news that night? So, well, the, the times are. Mary Mango Midge is on at one forty-five, so, oh, so right. that's the okay. watch with I might not seen that. slot. Then yeah. Clangers is on at four twenty-five after right. Play School and before Jack and Ori. Then right. after Blue Peter, you get Hong Kong Fooey. Then the Magic right. Roundabout is on just before the national news. Oh, so it's ah, yeah. we're in the Magic Roundabout before the news yeah. era. Oh, so of okay. course, so of course, right. you rem you you probably fondly remember the five minutes before the. The news slot. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that my, my dad was. I mean, it's funny when you say. I mean, because obviously it's, it's more animation than actual cartoons. But it's um, my my father was a big fan of Ivor the Engine because he was Welsh. Yeah. You see. All right. And <laughs> broad sword calling Danny Boy. No, he was uh, he was very Welsh. And and uh, even though he didn't live in the top left hand corner of Wales, he was a, he was a big Ivor fan. So he he was always he was fond of that when it came on before the news. Uh, but there was a whole cycle, wasn't there, of, of pre news. Things. Yes. Um, I mean, was Barbara Papa one that slipped into that? Barbara Papa's that around that period. I don't think it's the five minutes before the news slot, and I would need to right. look it up. But yeah, because uh, I remember when things like the Perishers came along and Fred Bassett as well. Um, that yeah, was, I was going to say those two. I remember. Yeah, because yeah. because well. Dougal was a was a. I mean, he was a. It was across the age. I mean, was it uh, Jasper Carrot did a. A spoof, didn't he, of Magic Roundabout? Mm, yeah, uh, in the mid seventies. So, uh, so Dougal and the Magic Roundabout were, were pop culture icons by then, of course, turning up in the goodies later. But uh, <laughs> all French, I believe. Yes. Well, it's just interesting with this list that Clangers, of course, has made a bit of a comeback in recent years. And I know Lisa. Yes. You were watching it only yesterday, yeah. weren't you? I, I watch it if if I'm at home when it's on. I will watch it. And even though I don't always watch it, watch it, it's on in the background. It's I, I love it. I love the Soup Dragon. She's <laughs> she's a terrible mugger to camera. You know, she'll sort of smile, look at the camera, and smile, and then look away. Now, now Clangers is uh, narrated by Michael Palin. It is. And didn't they yes. do a Monty Python in joke the other day? Yes, they did. They I can't remember what they were doing. They had something in it. Played the Monty Python uh, music, the what? Liberty Bell. Yeah. And, and uh, Michael Penny says, "Oh, that sounds familiar." <laughs> so yeah, it was a little sort of in joke. For but him, I like I the think. fact that's the joke for the adults watching, not yes. for the kids. Yeah. And I think Magic oh, Roundabout is is a very good example of of a sort of animation that, it, as a kid, you could enjoy it, but as a, as an adult, you could also enjoy it in a whole different way. I don't know if you've sort of gone back and watched any in recent years. But there's a real mm -hmm. Tony Hancock feel about Dougal's character, I mm -hmm. always think. Mm. Uh, that, that we do like a bit of meta, don't yeah. we? That's the thing. But a bit of textuality. But Lisa, you're, but, you're also in favour of um, some cartoons that maybe some people are less keen on. I, I'm yeah. thinking uh, maybe Godzuki. Yes. Yes, I, lo I, I am the one person in the country that liked Godzuki. <laughs> And I appreciate he was annoying, but I w it, but he was little and he was a dinosaur, and I was little and I was probably annoying. So I, I thought you can say, and I was a dinosaur I too. A dinosaur, but, <laughs> but yeah, I could, Not that old. <laughs> I could appreciate him. What, what about Scrappy Doo? Uh, Do uh, Scrappy Doo, not so much. I can see that Scrappy Doo is, mm. is a bit annoying, but uh, yeah. yeah. But what about you, Paul? What 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 are your sort of favourite cartoons or animation? Well, the ones I remember when I was very young, which I haven't sort of come back to in any big way uh, more, more recently, were things like Battle of the Planets, and I definitely remember playing Space Sentinels in the garden. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I remember reading somewhere, and I'm sure there's a lot more information about it, but I believe that the version of Battle of the Planets we got was just the kind of a toned down version with lots of bits missing and there was lots there was lots more to it than we ever saw but I, I'm, I'm not completely sure about the background of that but, and I don't really remember much about what happened in the Space Sentinels I really ought to check out more to, to um, sort of 
It was that big uh, floating head, head, wasn't it? The big floating stripy head. Uh, Sentinel One or something. Yeah, I, I, just, I did a lot just, of drawings. <laughs> I, I, I just remember there being enough characters that uh, was there three of them, and I think there were three of us playing games. So we just had to yeah. pick which one we wanted to be. Wasn't there? Wasn't was, it, was that the one with Seven Zark Seven, or was he the one who who turned up to narrate Battle of the Planets? Mm. It all muddled, it, we probably blend as I was saying in a previous episode we yeah. probably blended these shows into our own mm. mixture anyway so. they both had it's, it was that thing where, where for some reason the only way you could interest kids was to add a robot to anything at all uh, yeah and then it was, it was again it's that whole thing that Scooby Doo worked perfectly well and we all enjoyed it but suddenly they had to put a kid friendly character in and yeah and I all the kids liked, went ugh I, I, I never liked um, shows with kids in when I was a kid. I, that's uh, the last thing. Star. I, I, I mean, e- <laughs> even the um, uh, like even the soap operas I watched. I, I hated the younger characters. I was always more interested in the adults who were yeah. usually doing. Um, and even things like Children of the Stones or or, or Ace of Wands or anything. The, the younger characters. That, I mean, the people in Ace of Wands are all over twenty, mm. and and the, the the kid in Children of the Stones is probably near voting age. Mm. Um, so, so you know I, that, but that was fine. You didn't want to. You were more interested in seeing slightly older people than yourself. Not you didn't want to see people your age or younger. I think that's the problem with Adric. I think a lot, a lot of people who were the same age or older than Adric found him annoying. Whereas mm. to me, he was a few years older than me so I never had a problem with that trick. I've just looked at the whole boy genius thing though isn't it it's, it, it seems to be dropped into a lot of those sort of shows and uh, yeah, for some reason <laughs> the, the, the younger viewers really can't stand other other geniuses maybe it's something to do with being at school <laughs> I've just looked at the characters for Space Sentinel and I've, I'm, I'm really interested now Paul because <laughs> you've got the three human characters you've got Sentinel 1 and the maintenance robot is Mo maintenance no. operative so seven zark seven mm. um is in the, is other, in one. the other one um so the mm. three main characters are hercules blonde haired and blue eyed man possesses superhuman strength obsessed with ex- <laughs> exercise and healthy eating Merc- mercury <laughs> can run and fly purportedly up to the speed of light chinese and pa- practices martial arts as a hobby or astria who can morph into any earth animal and as the de facto leader of the team. Oh, blimey. So which which one were you then, Paul? He was all of them. <laughs> Probably. I can't... That's the thing I do wonder. I'm not sure. I don't remember who would have been my favourite. But uh, uh, and as I was saying before, it was all, we were all... Um, uh, well, no, I wasn't a tomboy, but the other two uh, were tomboys. So I don't know that any of them would have wanted to have, have, have been the, the lady one. Unless she, because they were all strong, maybe that wasn't such a problem. But I mean, we were very little. Well, I, I, um, I'll have to. Shall I give you the choice from Battle of the Planets? <laughs> mm. So, uh, Battle of the Planets, um, it, it's the one where they're all dressed as birds, aren't they? Um, mm. They've got sort of bird headdresses, aren't they? So you've got, se- yeah, Seven Zark Seven, Keop, Mark, Jason, Tiny, uh, Princess. I, th- I think she's the one you can see her draws in the opening titles, That's isn't it? sound like a dog. It <laughs> sounds like a dog. The old, the old manga pants shop. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just imagine Paul doing somersaults or something like that, you know. <laughs> so, and of course, tiny being ironically not tiny. Yes, indeed. Yeah, Wasn't Keop oh, the, the, the annoying one that uh, didn't speak properly or something? <laughs> There was a sulky one. There was a very sulky one. Yeah, <laughs> there was a pic- I've, picture there of them. I've got, I, I've got a, I've, I've just got a picture of the Space Sentinels going back to them, and the 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 blonde haired one looks like He Man yeah. a few years before He Man. <laughs> <laughs> but it obviously obviously the same demographic. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest, I don't know. Th- those <laughs> never really did it for me. I have to say that they were all a bit too sort of good looking and, and squeaky clean you know it, give give me something like Top Cat or something like that in, in my book or Boss mm-hmm. Cat uh, or, as Tim Worthington would have you say yeah well well, it, it was it was Top Cat because yeah. he was called TC but mm-hmm. yes in the UK they changed it to Boss Cat I think because yeah. there was a cat food called Top Cat that's right there? yeah but yeah so, mm. so, some sort of scabby old cats that lived in bins were, were much more <laughs> up my street frankly 
<laughs> I mean, you're saying about Battle of the Planets and, and that, I always get confused because there was a series on and I was actually, I looked it up and I was surprised to see it. it was, I think it's late 80s, early 90s. And it's um, Captain Planet and the Planeteers. Right. And it was a very ecological series qu- quite early on before a lot of other things were picking this up. But I always remember at the end of it, there'd be this sort of message about you know right. how you should look after the planet and all this sort of thing and i think that's what sticks in my memory most having that sort of slightly sort of um uh, prosy message at the end of it you yeah. know but martin, martin obviously worked in brighton but not anywhere else <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> martin you, you, you know a, a fair bit about animation from your sort of well a, artists artistic I'm, leanings i I'm guess very old. <laughs> <laughs> but were you aware as a kid of the different schools of where these things came from so were you able to distinguish between like Disney and Hanna-Barbera oh and, yeah and definitely that? I mean if, if you think uh, specifically uh, about the difference uh, in quality of, of different eras of Tom and Jerry for example mm. there's some there's some very the old Tom and Jerry's were, were beautifully crafted and then the, obviously the later ones were much sort of cheaper looking and again I think maybe it's something to do with like the likes of us can always spot location film and studio video. I think some people can cannot see the difference between the sort of cheap and the expensive animation. Yeah. Or maybe it's just an age thing, and maybe our perception filters are different. But you could definitely see uh, the the quality of, of of Tom and Jerry changing, and to a certain extent with uh, Warner Brothers as well. You know, because to be fair, you know. The, you don't see them now, but Warner Brothers cartoons were, used to pop up all the time when we were kids on TV. You know, and uh, I think the other interesting thing is is when you get to something like Pink Panther. The Pink Panther cartoons are uh, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're they're, they're very arch, if you like. Mm. They're they're very clever. You know, they're, they're quite sort of adult. The, the humor is quite adult. But when you when you look at the uh, the uh, the actual, you know, the films, I think the best thing about the Pink Panther films is the title sequences, which are witty as hell. They are beautiful things. You know, oh, I've killed everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but with that insight, everyone's going gobsmacked. What's he saying? <laughs> but Paul, uh, do you remember Disney Time being on? So, uh, as as, that, as a special program, because I've just got is that the one with I've got some. Is that the one that Tom Baker did? Well, yes. You see, I've got the listings okay. here for seventy three mm. and seventy five, and John Pertwee presented Disney Time in seventy three. Uh, Tom Baker did it in seventy five. So I almost got it in my head that if you were Doctor Who, you had to present Disney Time, and I don't <laughs> think Peter Davison ever did. No, I, I don't, think I, I he don't did, know, no. but. Yeah. Obviously, we we sort of know the Tom Baker links from I think it's on the wasn't it on the Terror of the Zygons? I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, uh, VHS even I think it, at one point it's certainly on 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 the DVD. Uh, but d- did you regard th- those sort of things as time filler or what? Because I'm just looking at the listings for John Pertwee. So you've got things like Mary Poppins and Alice in Wonderland, uh, but you've also got. Um, the Gnome Mobile and Fun and Fancy Free and the World's Greatest Athlete. I don't even know what those are. Sorry, no, I, I was going to say, I, I, I don't remember how much I remember, because you see so many things on DVDs, you start, you start to forget that you hadn't actually seen them originally, or maybe if you had, you'd forgotten them, because I would have been too young to have seen those two in, anyway, originally, and unless they came back and introduced them again, uh, or introduced other films later on. Um, uh, sorry, Lisa. That's, that's, they were just popular. Sorry, go on. <laughs> sorry, I was just going to say, I think the great, the world's greatest athlete is one of those live-action Disney films. Things like you know, um, Digby, the biggest dog in the world, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. But with, with they, they were always presented, weren't they, by whoever was a popular children's entertainer at the time. So you probably got uh, little and large. Probably did. Right? <laughs> you know, probably, possibly a goodie or two. You know, they were, and it, and they are basically clip shows when all said and done. Yeah. But obviously it's sponsored by by Disney. But we also had the wonderful world of Disney as that Saturday night programme as well which used to be on uh, sometimes in that sort of early evening slot in the summer so there, there was a lot of Disney there and there was probably a lot of deals done you know but equally the same sort of clips would turn up on screen test oh, that's true yeah and you yeah. would and you would get and you would get sort of 
you would, might get a new children's film foundation film that would turn up on screen test that we'd never heard of and we never knew where you could go and see it but they were made <laughs> but then um but the also you would get a sequence from Mary Poppins, you know, the the uh, the animated sequence from Mary Poppins or something would turn up in in that, and they would. So I th I'd, it's almost like there was some sort of deal that they could have these clips for <laughs> half a dozen different shows. You know, I mean, I rarely yeah. went to the cinema. Anyway, um, hmm. I ve I think I went to see the Jungle Book in the cinema, but in in terms of your classic Disney stuff, all of that I'd, I'd see through television. You know, a lot, a lot later. I don't know about about mm. anybody else, but I, I got taken to see well, the Jungle Book when I was very young, about four, uh, three or four. And mm. I don't actually remember it, but I know that my sister and her then partner might be her husband, now husband, took me to see it. So I'm terrible, yeah, I really. I was taken to see Fantasia, and I think I was very bored. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and and I mean, I love Fantasia now, but. Then I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I might have seen a very few, but like you, you say, Andrew, I I didn't get to the, take him to the cinema that much. But the weird thing is, when I first met my friend Callum, who's my flatmate, uh, he he was quite a big Disney fan, and for a period of a few months, he would lend me a, a like a, a Disney film to watch over my Sunday lunch. So I, I sort of. Uh, caught up with a lot I mean this was in the mid 90s so um, so he would only have led me up to whatever was sort of out into the early 90s but uh, yeah I did sort of catch up and, and watch sort of lots that I've probably never seen before um, uh, as, as sort of because I was they were there were available but I didn't see a lot of them at the cinema I think there's a there's a, there's a phase with Disney isn't there because there's there was the the sort of Snow White uh, through till probably about Aristocats phase, and then there seemed to be nothing, and then then suddenly that you came through with the Aladdin and uh, Beauty and the Beast phase, and I think our, our age group may have dropped between the two sort of eras, if you like. If that makes any sense at all? Well, I I I, I, I honestly think that um, some of my favourite sort of animation things are now almost utterly forgotten. Because we were so, right. we were thinking about what to what to talk about, and, and inevitably you go onto YouTube and start sort of typing a few things in. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thinking of things like Soprance a lot, which Lisa has probably got <laughs> no memory of whatsoever, no. and I doubt Paul has no. too. Because mm. that wash with dragons. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Martin, do you do you recall Soprance a lot? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean that that was uh, it, it was our era. But like I say, it, it's it's only later on when you realise it was basically Captain Pugwash, wasn't mm. it? I mean, it was, you know, it was uh, the same style, the same thing. But but we there was a I mean there was a lot of children's animation. You know, there was uh, weird things like uh, Crystal Tips and Alistair, <laughs> which was kind of bizarre. I don't know if anybody remembers. Oh, that. I do. But it's it. it it was kind of uh, there was a lot of lunchtime stuff in that sort of ten minute, uh, twelve till ten past before Rainbow and stuff, which I know I probably shouldn't have been watching because I was probably far too old for it. But it, you get to an age where anything like that really starts to appeal, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But then of course in the evening, you had these uh, the American Hanna Barbera series. So you had the Hair Bear Bunch, you had uh, Hong Kong Fooey and all those, and you, and the same again, TC Top Cat Boss Cat. They would, and they would have the same voices. You started to recognise the voices. There was, there was a moment in, uh, is it the Monsters or the Adams Family, where the chap who does Choo Choo, all right, turns up, okay, uh, and and his voice is so distinctive. And the guy who was, uh, um, I'll get you, Penelope Pitstop, Hooded Claw, yeah, mm. his voice. I can't remember the actor's name, but his voice kept turning up. <laughs> Sylvester Sneakley or whatever it was <laughs> kept turning up in all sorts of things. You know. Cause it I think the voices were what I think you started to think you're a bit clever because I know that voice. I know that voice from from uh, from Yogi Bear or from you know some other series. Because isn't it Uncle Arthur from Bewitched? The actor that does mm. the voice for the Hoodie Claw slash Sylvester Sneakley is in an episode of The Monsters, isn't he? And he's and he's, he's but it's very distinctive. Even without knowing it's him, you can tell it's him. Yeah. Because yeah. the moment he opens his mouth, he just sounds like Sylvester Sneakley. 
So yeah, uh, uh, Uncle Arthur in Bewitched is, is Paul Lind. That is that is him. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, him, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So, yeah if you if you look under his under his voice acting, he's he's, he's Sylvester Sneakly, the hooded claw. But he's also <laughs> he's also Mildew Wolf from It's the Wolf. Oh God! If you remember well, it, oh, it's the wolf. It's the wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and there's, but there's also that strange connected universes thing, isn't there? Where you've got dastardly and muttly, but you've got the wacky races, mm. you know, <laughs> mm. and you've got character crossovers, you know, and uh, and so, like I say, the perils of Penelope being a spin-off of of um, of wacky races. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and it's all it's all connected, and it's, it's a bit like the. Um, the, was it Chigley and Trumpton and, and Gambwick Green? They all have a universe together. <laughs> the wacky races are going on over there, but someone's kidnapped Pen- Penelope Pitstop. <laughs> well, I, I, I like I... to think that our circle of podcast is like that now, yeah. that we're all in, inside <laughs> each other's fictional universes. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, can I just say, as a, as a woman, that I absolutely loathe Penelope Pitstop. <laughs> because she's I'm just, cutting that bit out Lisa <laughs> she just uses her femininity to get what she wants gives the yeah. wrong message to girls far too much pink far too much pink and far too much putting on lipstick yes and <laughs> fluttering her eyelashes at, at people so, what sort of role model is this for people? so come on then who's the best one in Wacky Races in then? Wacky Races who's your favourite I always like the Anhill Mob all right, why? I don't know. I just I really like the Anhill Bob. Oh, for Professor Pat Pending for me oh, yeah. every time. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. Uh, Martin or Paul, favourite wacky racer? Oh, oh Dick Dastardly. Definitely. Really? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Paul. Yeah, I think it'd be, it'd be Motley for me because I used to do. I used <laughs> we to do need the to impression. Team up, Paul. I used to yeah. I used to do the impression of Motley at school quite a bit. <laughs> I don't think I could do it now without coughing. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. But equally, um, dastardly and muttly. You wanted him to win at least one week. You know, you really. (laughs) I mean, if he didn't dick about so much, (laughs) he'd be. He was always about four miles ahead. Why didn't you just put your foot down? (laughs) (laughs) But dastardly and muttly in their flying machines was certainly, Mm. I think, less. Is less well remembered because mm. everybody, of course, called it "Stop the Pigeon." Yeah. But in the same mm. way that I liked Professor Pat Pending and his weird car, the way his car would turn into things, um, I always used to love the weird aeroplanes <laughs> he used to get in there. Like, there's one that's like a giant hammer in an anvil, and, and or, or one that's a giant cuckoo clock or things like that, and, and dastardly's inside disguised as a cuckoo or something like that. And it, it's just the it's sheer got, impracticality of it that always used to impress me. It's, it's kind of weird, though, because uh, last week um, Those Magnificent Men in Their Flying Machines was on. And mm. and again, it's the, the Ronald Searle sequence. I think it's Ronald Searle. Did the titles for that. And again, it's that same kind of bizarre aeroplane. You know, so, so these things were definitely sort of touching on each other. You know, They were sort of connecting the dots and things. And, uh, again, with going back to the Pink Panther, you know, it's 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 oh, someone saw there's a series in that, you know, and and, and maybe someone thought the same as a spin off from Wacky Racing. You know. But we we had the Goodies interview disc on last yes. night, didn't we? Yeah. And they were saying on that how much they enjoyed cartoons because of the 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 logic of the cartoon universe, mm-hmm. where you could get mm. run over by a steamroller and then inflated mm. with a bicycle pump and yeah. you were all right again. Mm-hmm. So mm. I, th- I think that sort of weird logic appeals to you as a kid and, mm. and probably as an adult too, certainly in my it's case. It's a wonderful thing with Tom and Jerry, isn't it, when like an, his, his face would suddenly be iron-shaped because he'd hit the iron. <laughs> or or, uh, or what's... Well, I, I, mean, I mean, the one, again, that I remember from that era is the uh, uh, Wiley e. Coyote and the Roadrunner. Oh, yeah. Mm. Because the, the, again, the the the, the sheer <laughs> the, the sheer misfortune of this coyote, but the persistence, the persistence to keep on going and keep on trying, and <laughs> they are just I, I I can still watch a Roadrunner cartoon and find it absolutely hilarious. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah they were, uh, Roadrunner is one of my favourites. And of course, all that that it goes back to Silent Pictures and Buster Keaton. You know, it's. It, and uh, Harold uh, Lloyd and all that kind of thing. It's all mm. it's all there in the old silent movies, and of course a lot of these things work because it's universal humour, if you like. You know? 
I think it's true that uh, if you could buy more stuff that said Acme on it, <laughs> I, 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 just generally, I'd buy it. You know, like an, an Acme toaster or something like that. I, I'd, I'd really like that. Not just an Acme bomb. You know, a big thing. Putting next door all your grot, grot stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so I always, I always, when I watched um, Sylvester and Tweety Pie, I was always on Sylvester's side. Mm. Tweety Pie's got to be one of the most annoying characters ever. <laughs> eat the bird, just eat the bird. Yeah, it's just like yeah, it's just. What was it on Pepe, Pepe Le Pew, who was used to occasionally get mistaken for a cat because of black paint? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there, there was an also, wasn't there, with with, um, with Yogi Bear? You know, Yogi Bear, and, yeah. and there was a kind of circle of characters like Quick Draw McGraw and Snagglepuss that all sort of existed in this universe and I think they were better known in America but they'd do these uh, like Yogi's gang and we'd be going we didn't know who any of them were mm -hmm. so Snagglepuss would like just be an irritatingly slightly fade sort of uh, pink cat in a bow tie really you know and we and we never really knew where he came from but presumably that character had been you know quite well known in other things either that or I just never heard of him before you know well, uh, certainly, I, I probably never even knew the Harlem Glo Globetrotters were, were real, you know, because <laughs> they just turned up... <laughs> the Scooby-Doo characters. Well, exactly. I mean, let, let's let's move on to Scooby-Doo, shall we? Mm. Um, I, I, I remember saying once to Nick, um, when an episode of Scooby-Doo came on the telly, I went, oh, that's a season two one. Because I could tell from the title sequence, because the ghosts were different. You know, um, <laughs> it show, shows my sort of my my level of atten attention to that. But uh, th there's there's, uh, I guess, the joke becomes that it's always the owner of the amusement arcade, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I quite like in the sort of later Scooby Doo stuff where you do have all this crossover stuff because you get the Adams family turning you do, up. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you you get. I think you might get back get. Do you get Batman and Robin I think as well? So. I've not, not sure. seen it, but I've, I think you've shown me a, a clip of it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. and that, that fascinates me to this day. That, you know, well, they had the whole whole year of guest starring. That's they? right. Yeah, <laughs> including the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, as as well, Ben Baker has pointed out in uh, Don't Let's Chart a while ago, you do get all these dreadful knockoffs as well. Because uh, it's basically the formula of like three teenagers in a car or or a buggy or something like that. And, oh, Goober and, and the Ghost Chaser! Exactly, yes, <laughs> and, and, and a dog. Yeah. Speed Go, buggy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 just, well, not, it really is cut and paste in some yeah. cases, isn't it? You know? yeah, well. But out of, speed buggy and, and and I dream of genie as well. Oh. Sorry, yes, I was going to say out of all of those, those the sort of slightly knockoffs. I think um, Captain Caveman's my favourite. I absolutely adored Captain Caveman when yeah. I was a child. Mm. And I don't really know why, because he's a potentially irritating character who does nothing but shouts Captain Caveman and bashes mm. people with his club. <laughs> but I, I really liked him. So, And also, um, was when, when I was a, sort of in the early 80s, this is sort of going off to say, I think the, the first time I ever saw Laurel and Hardy was in the Laurel and Hardy cartoon. I don't mm. think I'd ever seen any of the mm. films, but I knew them from the cartoon, which is... Well, I think they guested in Scooby-Doo, didn't they, as well? Quite possibly, <laughs> yes. Mm. I mean, but you see, there was also all... all there, was, there, was, there was a Beatles cartoon, wasn't there? There was a Jackson 5 cartoon, <laughs> you know, the, the pop bands. They did cartoons based on them as well. Yeah. It's all. It's all. It, I know it's all marketing, really. But it's fascinating that that you could actually have cartoons based around pop bands, and they didn't do one for the monkeys. <laughs> but Paul, I, I know you. When we, we were sort of deciding, you, you mentioned Captain Caveman as well. Is he a particular favourite of yours? Or? Yeah, uh, yeah. But I, I mean, I, I don't like even remember the sort of particular episodes or, or anything now. But uh, yeah, it's definitely and. Uh, um, I wouldn't sort of say that I sort of knew whether any history about it. Just I just remember it being on. And I remember watching it, and and it was sort of quite formulaic. But but I enjoyed I I, I enjoyed it. Wasn't um, he what, like what, half of the the Slug Brothers? Were they the Slug Brothers? I think that I think they were just genetically related. I don't yes. think they were actually. genetically. <laughs> <laughs> the DNA was there. Yeah. See, the other thing is I I. 
I've got this vague idea in my head that Captain Caveman had other it was like three cartoons and one of which was something else and I vaguely remember this old man on a park bench called Superhero Tyrone oh is and and I and I think that was a spin off from Rowan and Martin's Laughing yes I was going to say and that I vaguely yeah. re- I associate it with Captain Caveman for some reason uh, I may be completely wrong about uh, that I usually am well sometimes you would get like three cartoons packaged together in a Sort of a bigger, a bigger series because uh, we we did, mm. of course, think about the banana splits as well. Because yes. you've got mm. um, was it the Three Musketeers mm. um, and Arabian Nights in yes. that as well? Yeah, yeah. Weren't there those people who shrank down to? Th- there was a family that had a car and they shrank down to miniature size. Oh God, that yeah. Was, that was on the banana splits as well. Mm. Oh. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but <laughs> I can't remember what it was called. I cannot remember what it was called, but I just had this image in my head. <laughs> because uh, I may have had some very weird dreams when I was that age. Because <laughs> there was there was also a series, and um, I, I did think about Cavern. This looks unfamiliar, but somebody else had already done it. But called the the Drac Pack, and it was like the descendants oh. of of Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, and the Wolfman. And I, that, yeah, that rings a bell. I looked at the opening and um, YouTube the other day, and it, quite frankly, it looks awful. But um, <laughs> I think the reason I remembered it is because one of my classmates, when I was at um, junior school, they used to have a fancy dress thing every year, and she dressed up as Vampiro, who was one of the baddies in it. So I think that's the only reason it's stuck in my memory. Wow. I was just looking, and I found the the listing for CB Bears. Uh, which okay. was a Hanna Barbera, Hanna Barbera Barbera. I always want to say Barbara, like she's off of you know <laughs> Hartnell. Uh, Barbara <laughs> uh, from 1977, which ran for 60 minutes, but it had okay. six segments in it. So there was the CB Bears, which was three bears who were investigators, um, a bit like Charlie's <laughs> Angels. Um, <laughs> there's, bl- there's Blast Off Buzzard. Hey, it's the king, which we oh, voted for as being annoying. God, yeah. uh, Posse impossible, shake, rattle and roll, and undercover elephant. Shake, rattle and roll rings a bell. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know if any of these ring a bell with you, Martin, or, or what. But they all, they, all, they all ring bells. Yeah, it's like inch high private eye. You know, it's <laughs> they, they were, they were, they all seem to run for their thirteen weeks and then disappear. And you'd sort of think, why is it not on this week? And you'd never see it again. That was the thing I remember most about them. They, they didn't really cycle around. I mean, a lot of these things in American television would have filled the entire morning, wouldn't they? But but we got them on the BBC in the evening, and we got them until they ran out, and then they put another one on. And this is why we actually got Speed Buggy and Inch High and, and all this kind of thing. And it, it, it's, kind of, it's, it's kind of fascinating, really, because any time, like, I mean, was it Hey, It's the King? Yeah. Is that what it was called? Yeah. Any time a show was successful, so presumably that was Happy Days. That's, really, yes, absolutely. They would do a sort of cartoon version of it. You know, he's a cool character with a haircut. Let's make him a king. You know? <laughs> uh, um, I was just going to say that Shake, Rattle, and Roll uh, were three ghosts who run the Haunted Inn, a hotel for ghosts and other supernatural creatures, mm. as they tend to their needs. And they have well, Hotel Transylvania has been very popular, hasn't it? <laughs> uh, and they have workplace hijinks. Um, oh. And there's their <laughs> ghost exterminator nemesis, Sydney Merciless. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, I wonder. Yeah, that sounds like um, some of the plot lines I've done on the Shallow podcast, where I've had Yeti Uncle John doing ghost tours for ghosts and showing showing. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure. If I'd have been, they would have made that into a series back then. Like they <laughs> didn't seem. To, most of the ideas seemed to be ones you could write on the back of a postcard, which is usually somewhere some of the best ideas come from. Actually, today. I suspect that explains Ludwig, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was it was a, an egg, wasn't it? It, an egg, egg, it was a musical egg, sort of it? mechanical egg. That's mm. right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's almost no mm. explanation for Ludwig, but. Um, I mean, yes, Martin, you, you mentioned Ludwig. But let, let's talk about mm-hmm. some of the really weird stuff we used to we used to get, mostly from Czechoslovakia for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, was it, is it uh, Alexei Sale goes on about Czechoslovakian cartoons in stuff at some point about someone being chased by blocks of concrete? <laughs> <laughs> Cause, cause I, the, the, you occasionally used to get these things quite late on Channel Four, didn't you? Sort of 
Polish cartoons and what have you. It's bizarre. Because I do remember the mole. I, I don't know whether you, oh, you, you do, Martin. And I couldn't, te- oh, yeah. couldn't tell you a damn thing about whatever happened in the mole he each week. Basically, he used to, uh, his hole would appear. and well, I have the feeling it was very silent. It was one of those, there was quite a lot of silent cartoons. Uh, one, they had you know, music but no actual dialogue. Hmm. Uh, there was quite a l- l- long sort of fa- tradition, if you like, of, of that kind of that kind of animation. And yes, he was probably mostly Czechoslovakian, <laughs> but international. Yes, you know, that's the point. Yeah, oh yeah. But I, I, uh, I was going through my old uh, folders and stuff a few weeks ago, and I found a drawing that I'd done based on uh, something called Aubrey. And Aubrey was a kind of simple character in the, in much in the same way as Henry's cat, but bright orange and egg shaped. <laughs> and this cartoon must have appealed to me because I, I went off and drew Aubrey. I thought this is great in one of my sketchbooks. <laughs> so, and I don't imagine anybody has a clue what Aubrey was. But but you've also in that same vein is you've you've got the much simpler uh, card. I mean, you think about Mr. Ben. I mean, Mr. Ben, you can have the same image on screen for what twenty seconds. Mm. You know, uh, or it feels that way sometimes. I know Mr. Ben's very popular, but there's not much actual animation to it. And there was the very same uh, thing that uh, Henry's cat. Henry's cat was very inanimate yeah. in its animation, and of course, then of course you got rhubarb and custard. Indeed, mm. but, but who were much more. Uh, but it was all done. It's Bob Godfrey, wasn't it? With 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 scribble markers, uh, and you know these things were fabulous. But but and you know lasted five ten minutes and and yet you know in many ways very simple to produce but but it's all about the storytelling and that's really what animation is isn't it it's about the storytelling i was going to say martin you've recently drawn us as noah and nelly as mm-hmm. well <laughs> uh, well, and again same same kind of thing yeah. I, I was very pleased with that because again mm-hmm. again it, it's Did a you... show i remember and lisa you're mm. probably sort of too too just a bit too young to yeah um, yeah. But yeah, it, it, again, in the sort of Sir Prancelot vein, it was on for a few years and then utterly disappears. Um, whereas mm. other stuff has a much lo- longer sell-by date, doesn't mm. it? Uh, Paul, um, I'd like to ask you about working with puppets because you, you, uh-huh. more than any of us here, you've worked with puppets. And <laughs> why did you make that decision? First of all. Well, this goes back to when I was doing Sutton Park, and um, quite, I think one of the. Well, I used to go into sort of pound shops to find cheap things that I could use to um, to, to work into the story, and I'm, I I can't remember the first time I I sort of stumbled upon these puppets, but uh, they were really for how cheap they were, they were pretty well made, um, and, and some still exist to this day. But uh, I, I think. Once I realised I could use them in the show, it gave me a characters to interact with. When, because sometimes I was there was a period around the well, I was at university when I first start, sort of first started using them on the show. But and and then I was sort of like for a few months, I, I, still like living by myself and not really in a situation where I um, I had other actors except for at weekends. So it really made me think, well, I can do stories involving myself, but also involving the puppets. Um, and then if other actors were around, they soon learned to interact with them as if, you know, I, I think I pretty much said, you know, imagine it's the Muppets, you know, the, the guests on the Muppets don't, the human guests on the Muppets don't kind of go, well, that's just a guy with a, a sock puppet on his hand or something or or, what, or, or whatever that would that would spoil it. So, I think because we all grew up with the Muppets and things like that, we we, we knew to uh, interact with them as if they were real. Although that wasn't always the case. My brother did like to take the heads off some of the Muppets <laughs> uh, <laughs> during scenes, and then you'd have the thing, then you'd have a little finger wiggling around till the head was returned. Oh, so we, didn't mind, we didn't mind. We didn't mind playing playing you know, around with the uh, with. with being, being extra silly with them. Um, oh, just got this vision of these handless, all your friends having no hands. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but, but yeah, they became very g- good sort of extra characters, uh, and there were whole ep- loads of episodes where it was as much about the puppet characters um, 
uh, uh, you know, they... But when you when you got these puppets, did they mm. soon evolve their own characters, or did you have a character in mind and then you chose a puppet for it, which, which was sort of leading the the character of, of the piece? It, I, I guess. I mean, I mean, mostly I had to do the voices, so it was kind of what I think. I, I guess it was sometimes it was. The character looks like this. He would have this voice. Um, I think it was sort of. Uh, uh, yeah, it's been a long. Yeah. You know, Cause I'm thinking. I'm thinking of somebody like. Yeah. I'm thinking of somebody like Little J, and I, I worked a lot with yeah. Little J, and yeah. I, I found your ability to jump from your personality to Little J's within a scene uh, really clever, and they were. He, he was a very clearly defined character. Um, but but how, how did he evolve almost straight away? Um, I, I don't remember his his early sort of first appearance. Was he there on the screen instantly? Or yeah, I mean, I mean because these episodes have been digitised, and it's such a long time. When I'm watching it now, it's it's almost new to me as as far as you know the the, the how the characters were slowly. So they didn't all appear on Wonder. I, I think I, I I can't remember. I probably bought two or three and thought, oh, well, this is working, and then went back to that. I pretty much went back to the shop where I bought the puppets um, and bought more and more of them to add to the... And then there were at least some of them where I had two, like Cromarty, who's sort of slightly mad scientist-type character. I had two Cromarty's. I had two little J's. And I also had this kind of weird little J that was looked like he was evil. So that made me think, oh, OK, so I can do a plot line where little J drinks a potion and becomes like an, a, a, an evil version. Um, so as usual, I kind of use the let, let the props dictate a lot of, um, you know, what, what I did, which is probably more fun than kind of going, I need a puppet that looks like this. And it must do, you know. Well, I mean, there was a puppet that looked a little bit like my friend Kerry from university. So um, actually... Around the time that I got that puppet, that um, Kerry and I weren't seeing each other that much, so he was no longer in the show. So I was able to have, oh my goodness, Kerry's now a, a puppet, um, and, and yeah, yeah, I think I worked quite a lot of um, mythology as I went along, which most of it I've forgotten and is all new to me. <laughs> <laughs> but what about you? Lee? There's a lot of tradition, though, isn't there? There's a lot of tradition. <laughs> with with I mean you think of emu you think of mm. gopher Gordon the gopher mm. you know that the interaction with puppet you know I think I think it's just part of our DNA now as as, as television viewers in the from the twentieth century you know? it, it, it's just lucky that a lot of these puppets um although they were probably originally made for I presume I, I don't know about things like Gordon the gopher and things whether they were in the shops before or they were made especially by somebody in the BBC I guess if they were going to be copyrighted they might have been originally um, commissioned but uh, certainly the ones that I used in Sutton Park I don't know what their history was what whether they were you know where they'd come from who created them um, but I was just lucky that they they fitted on the hand of a 20 year old <laughs> <laughs> um, you know because uh, you know, I was able to use them on the show but Lisa what about acting with them how easy did you find acting with a puppet ah not too difficult as far as I remember the thing that most vividly sticks in my mind, it wasn't a puppet but is being chased around the maze at Crystal Palace Park by an axe on a piece of string and seeing the faces of the people coming the other way wondering what on earth was going on <laughs> as, as we sort well, of well, a, lot of, yeah, a lot of the stuff we did with our, our friend Lee was very based on cartoon or, or good easy type things because he um, He'd make props like he'd make like a ticking time bomb with a, a paper mache painted, you know, like like it was a bomb with a fr with a, a sparkler as a fuse, and so it, th that sort of thing was very influenced by car what you see in cartoons or or sort of um, silent movies or whatever. But Mar Martin, you briefly an Look. animated us for Christmas Day, didn't you? With, with, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a lot easier now. Well, it's not as easy for me at the moment because of various reasons. But uh, but uh, no, it, it's lip syncing is a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, luckily, I did a certain amount of training for that, and obviously, I've had to do it professionally anyway. Uh, like building sequences and stuff. So, uh, but the software these days it makes it a lot 
more straightforward to do than it, than it did back in my day. I mean, it was interesting. Uh, I, I was I was remembering when you when you were talking about uh, Vision On mm. that one of the projects I had at college, or one of the projects we had at college, was we had to produce sequences for Jigsaw. All oh, right, and uh, it was one of our uh, term uh, set uh, projects, and uh, and we had to do a six-letter word. And we had to do a fifteen-second animation that illustrated the word. So it was the solution animation, uh, and obviously we had uh, there was a range of words you could pick for the next series. So because uh, we were based in South Wales at the time, so we were just up the road from Bristol. It was uh, produced in Bristol. Oh. So. Um, so it, it's it, you know, there is a little bit of tradition there. I mean, I did go for a couple of uh, interviews uh, for um, uh, Cosgrove Hall. Luckily, it was I didn't get the job because <laughs> that was when about a year later they had to get rid of everybody because uh, Thames lost their franchise. But um, but so I did some storyboarding for Dr uh, Count Duckula. There's a claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> I did about I did about ten seconds worth of, of storyboarding for as because they were I think they were short some day and they said can you draw these for us and I did but, uh, but there we go I don't know what ever happened to those I think they just put them in a bin but said thank you very much but nevertheless I did I did do that for a while so hooray it's about the time they were built, filming BFG because I had all the props when I went for the interview so that was nice yeah. I'd also like to ask Martin um, animation for Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Ah, uh, oh, cells. Cells. Yes. No, I, yeah. I think that stands up superbly even today. I don't know about you, but what, what, it, do, it, what do you think the, of that? The beautiful thing I, I think about it is that the, the, the when you when you look at the uh, the animated graphics of Hitchhiker, it doesn't talk down. I mean, it's all timed to the dialogue, which is again is is quite marvelous because it's basically somebody sliding a, a blue gel across to make it a pink gel or whatever. And uh, and it's all timed absolutely to the dialogue, so it must have taken ages to do. But it's the fact that there's other things going on. I mean, that's now uh, again that's become more common because in the modern era, people they know people freeze frame, and and so they used to put things on uh, screens on Star Trek and stuff, and that people would, if they freeze framed, they could see it. But uh, back then, it, there's a lot going, a lot of information coming at you, and, and little witty sort of drawings in the corner. And uh, all done with cells and um, uh, uh, rostrum cameras. You know, it's astonishing, really, when you think about it. But, but actually, I think because it was shot on film like that, it probably holds up. There was an old theory that they used to say that. Uh, I mean, it never actually came to true because later on they did reshoot the effects. But they used to say in the early days of Star Trek: The Next Generation that actually on a big screen, the old um, special effects would look better than than the new ones because the new ones were shot for video but the old ones were shot on film and they would blow up cinema size so they would actually be they would still hold up but of course now they've replaced them all anyway so, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that theory doesn't hold water but um but yeah i it, it, it there's there's some there's something beautiful about uh, the hitchhiker uh, idea because obviously now it's become what we have in our pockets it's what you know it, it that kind of thinking is what actually became a lot of the way the web was presented, but it but it's actually be beautifully laid out. You know? I mean, you, the the one that sticks in the mind is the Babelfish sequence because mm. it's it's just a gorgeously witty piece of animation you know? and very simple frame. You know, to, when the fish turns, that's only probably three or four frames, but you know, exquisite. But Paul, um, in terms of more modern stuff. Were you particularly into The Simpsons, King of the Hill, Beavers, but Beavers and Butthead, or South Park? And I think I know which one you're probably <laughs> going to pick. But For, uh, probably South Park. Although Simpsons, I, I, I definitely did like um, South Park. I definitely sort of followed for you know, quite, quite a few years, um, but. Uh, I, I, I'm sure this is the the case with with The Simpsons, but I, I liked. Uh, I, there were some really daft episodes of South Park because South Park's known for um, like being perhaps more gross out or being more offensive. But there were some just just daft episodes which I think you could have shown to anyone. I I, th I think there were different types of you know episodes. Like there was one with 
one of the early ones with the goldfish, the killer goldfish, and um, one with Barbara Streisand um, being a robot or something like that. And th there was some just just sort of really ridiculous. Oh, and there was the man who was in a coma, and, and he remembered the internet when, when it was, you know, at the time. This, you know, I don't know when that this came out, but there was it, it was. Rather than waking him up as a caveman or something, he'd been woken up from the late 90s when the internet was very slow. But they all acted like they couldn't understand him. <laughs> like, like, what's he saying? You know, like, like it was a caveman. And I just like, and, and it was just so deadpan, and I really like deadpan humour. And um, so, yeah, those are the episodes I tend to uh, remember. It's just, I, I haven't sort of continued, I, I, I think after about 10 years, um, yeah, a bit like The Simpsons, I, I, it was just too much to follow. And also sometimes the UK would get a bit of a delay on what was coming out, or you had to watch on, on a certain channel. Because South Park used to be on Channel 4, um, and so you knew where it was. But, uh, um, yeah, I, I sort of did chase them a bit when, when you had to wait for them to come out on DVD is the only way of seeing them. But We, um, we have got quite a few South Park soft toy characters upstairs yes. haven't we yeah we've got you, an you, angel kenny you went through a period of, mm. of sort of collecting them didn't yes. you yeah or, yes. or, or did i go through a period of buying them for well, you i, think, I, can't I remember. probably asked you to buy them for me yeah. but yeah yeah i've definitely got <laughs> an angel I, kenny i think i saw the movie about three times at the cinema i kept taking people to say you've got to come and see it. you've got to come and see it because i wanted to see it again um uh, and uh, yeah uh, um yeah, it's the strength is always in in the writing for those, though, isn't it? I mean, it, that's the thing. I mean, uh, I I remember one about F one eleven. I can't actually remember anything else about that that South Park episode, but I just remember thinking that's one I would want to, to show people, and then probably forgot all about it and never never recorded it. You know, this kind of thing. But because I I wasn't exposed to this stuff, because I didn't didn't have Sky, so my Simpsons has always been Channel Four Simpsons. You know, so I'm probably about fourteen years behind everybody else. Yeah, but there's um. It, it, it just show it shows the strength of just having strong ideas, strong characters, and and most animation. I, think, I mean, even if you go back to um, uh, Bagpuss and uh, you know uh, small films, you know they are really strong ideas, simply filmed. You know, and and it and it fascinates me also that the 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 spin off. Uh, uh, animation series they've made for things like uh, Planet of the Apes or or Star Trek is actually thought of quite highly by their fan groups to a certain extent because they are they are st st they still had very strong scriptwriters they weren't just sort of knocking out some you know Saturday morning filler they were actually using uh, scriptwriters from the series. To, to, or, or, or the original in the in the Planet of the Apes case, the original book sources to actually create something quite cerebral in their own little way. You know, I mean, there was loose talk in the sort of early nineties about doing a Sylvester McCoy uh, Doctor Who animated series. Now, I just wonder yeah. if you think that would have been a good time to to try that. I don't know. It, it, it's, it's, always, it's interesting. I, uh, my my thing that I would really 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 pay absolute good money to see or, or I wish they could get a budget is to take the Jago and Lightfoot series from Big Finish and do that in the style of Tim Burton and you know goes get the characters designed in a Tim Burton way and do the whole sort of Jago and Lightfoot series in a Tim Burton style I, I, I would love to see that you know I think that would be absolutely one you know that would just be beautiful I, I remember being very excited about Scream of the Shalco, even though it came out almost as, as the new series was being um, announced. But I, I think I was still excited because it seemed like a step closer to real. To, because as, as good as the audios can be, the big finish and stuff, it, it's not visual as far as it being on the TV screen. And that was one of the first things after, since the TV movie that was new that was visual. It didn't matter that it was that it was animation in fact that kind of made it cool and even though it was quite basic animation but good that's the thing good animation 
mm. costs a fortune. You know, it, yeah. it's, uh, this is why whenever they do one of the, um, the I know you were talking about uh, faceless ones uh, mm. on, on one of our conversations. You know, you 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 sort of feel you've got to you've got to buy two copies to give them a budget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because what, what's coming up next? Is it Fury from the Deep? Uh, Fury from Believe the Deep so. is, is, I have it on pre-order. There's no actual date for when it's coming out yet. Yeah. So it is coming out. Just and not do we know sure anything when. beyond that? I don't no. think we do, do we? No. 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 I would. They did. They did that. Sorry, they did that animate that trial animation for Weird in Space yeah. as an extra on one of the. So one would presume that was for a reason. Mm -hmm. but I don't know. Maybe. It, Maybe it was just a little test. Yeah. Are, are we are we thinking? You know, I mean, I know it's a bit of an aside. This, but you know, the the Blu-ray sets are always called the complete season, this, that, and other. Mm. Mm. Uh, is this? Do you think so that at some point they can call it the complete season one? You know, they'll they'll have to do Marco Polo, otherwise they can the complete what's left of season one doesn't quite sell in the same way. Or do you think this is now the 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 only way they think it's ever those 97, 96, whatever it is episodes is ever going to turn up well when you start to think about it um, season 2 only needs two episodes animated doesn't it mm. for um, yes. the crusade and yeah. we're quite close to that with some other seasons now when you do the sums so mm. Mm. Um, when you've got big chunks of six parters being released that's, that soon starts to make a dent in it doesn't it mm. so, so in a few years time I reckon you will you will have the complete everything, won't you? Mm. Uh, you know. Mm. Although, the, although those early seasons are far longer than than the pre nineteen seventy seasons, so mm. whether they would they be released in one box or would they be released in two parts? Or it'd be interesting to know what the plan is. Really, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, we shall have to see. Anyway, I think I'll, we'll start to wind that up, and let, mm -hmm. unless anybody else has any animations they'd like to I, I did want I did want to give just one, one shout out yes I did want to give a shout out for the the Charlie says uh, <laughs> cartoons mm. and 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 obviously advertising cartoons generally and how, how they, they shaped us as well you know there's an awful lot of um, uh, like Tony the Tiger and what have you you know that that shaped a generation <laughs> 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 and and I and again the the uh, these kinds of I mean, wasn't it Sesame Street born out of advertising on television because they wanted to use the same sort of 30 second get your attention methodology uh, to actually educate? And, you know, in many ways, that's that's why cartoons are great, you know, yeah. because they, they do get the attention of, 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 of small people. And as we've proved today, they lock in your brain and they stick with you, you know. I, for a very long time. I think certainly as a kid, you know, looking back at this schedule for 75, I made very little distinction between animation and live action, really. Mm -hmm. um, that mm. They were all telling stories just in slightly different ways. But as you said, so long as the story was, was good, mm. then that, that's what really mattered. The actual way of delivering that story really wasn't of great concern to me. But this is why um, something like the goodies worked so well, because they were doing what cartoon characters did with real people. Same with uh, Vision On, to a certain extent. You know, they they were actually taking that that uh, language and then doing it with real actors. You know, which is it's wonderful when you think about it. I I don't because I had you know because my brother was younger. I and I don't want to you know sound like I'm being sort of you know, oh just like an old man or whatever, but. But I remember thinking the stuff that my brother got to see was, you know, not half as much fun as the stuff that I'd seen in the 70s and early 80s, because it wasn't long after I, I was pretty, probably stopped watching kids TV um, earlier than maybe my age group would have expected me to, because I went to a particular school and I didn't get home until after it was all finished, after mm. after a certain, you know, a certain point. Um, but you know, my brother grew up on things like you know, Thundercats, and I know there are a lot of people in their mid thirties who are still very keen on Thundercats. I mean, Thundercats was probably one of the more experimental, interesting ones of that period. But um, it, it did start to sort of uh, some of the stuff that that was on, was, was sort of like, I mean, Thomas the Tank Engine and Postman Pat and those sorts of animation that they were probably aimed at a younger, a really young audience. So I definitely remember my brother watched them, mm. um, but. 
I don't know. It would be interesting to discuss some of the eighties or nineties cartoons with. We don't have any, we don't have anyone young enough probably on. <laughs> well, weren't they weren't they criticised because they were actually there to sell toys? I mean, th- that mm. was that was the theory behind them. You know, I mean, and, I re- I really didn't like things like He Man, things like that, and um, what little I saw of the of those ones. Mm. So I, I much preferred the, probably the tail end shows that I was getting, which is more your perhaps. The, the early 70s, mid 70s shows that we were still getting in the very early 80s and the new the new lot, mm. um, I was sort of maybe I was just growing out of it but I just don't think I think you're right, it was partly linked to toys because there were definitely He-Man toys mm. weren't there and things yeah. There's um, a beautiful simplicity though isn't there to something like Mary Mungo and Mitch you know, <laughs> and uh, I mean, I know the animation's simple, but but the the fact that this was actually showing a certain sector of the audience that you know that they lived in tower blocks, you know, and and they too could have adventures. You know, the, there was there was a beautiful simplicity in that idea, and and it worked, and and it and it did sort of you know click with the generation. You know? uh, of course, my my, my favourite animation of all of them would, would be the. The Wombles and Paddington, <laughs> um, that, that that style of animation. I, I don't think that I've ever seen anything like either Wombles or or Paddington um, that that has has inspired me so much. <laughs> oh, Paul. Uh, we should we should. I mean, we should also mention that uh, uh, Magic Roundabout was redone, wasn't it, with uh, mm. Nigel Play? Yes, is that right? That's right. Yes. But yeah. Paul, uh, I just wanted to say, um, following on from our conversation the other day. Uh, were you glad that we managed to track down Minuetto Allegretto by the Wombles <laughs> at Glastonbury? <laughs> yes, yeah. and we even got a tweet from Great Uncle Bulgaria, didn't we? we? Did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know the, the Wombles, oh, yeah. no of you. No, I was just saying it, it. It only very, very, relatively recently struck me that line about he can remember the days when he wasn't behind the times referred to the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> It takes a while I sometimes. Took, it, took, it took me about 40 years for that to click. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well... Uh, anyway, on that bombshell. Yes, oh, I'd yeah. like to thank you all for joining me today. We can do some more animation later if you want, because I'm, I'm sure mm-hmm. there's more. So I'd like to thank uh, Lisa, I'd like to thank okay. Martin, and I'd like to thank Paul mm-hmm. for joining us in conversation. And we'll be back again yeah. soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.